He wouldn't get it to him. How did y'all find out you had been blackballed? We 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 did we, when we. I think it's when we did that fire. Uh, this guy, I'll give his name. He was a musty, musty, musty billionaire. He was a shipbuilder. Uh, he had made a bet with Erwin Steinberg, who was the president of Mercury Records, that he didn't think a black group, he didn't want to sign us. He, he didn't think it was a black group that would... Uh, the mass of sales that Jerry Butler, Jerry Butler was the only black that uh, Mercury had ever had on their they, they roster. They might have had somebody else, but he, Jerry Butler was the only one that got big. Mm -hmm. And they were they weren't all that excited about hiring black. It was this real sophisticated white outfit. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he was the third largest record company. But he he wasn't even on the stock market. He was private owned. So you know he had to have some money to be up there with Sony or and uh was that other big record company? Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And she, he didn't want to mess around with no blacks. You know, he had Jerry Butler he might have had somebody else, but I don't think so. Uh -huh. Jerry, I know Jerry Butler was his biggest black artist. Uh -huh. He had motherfuckers like Perry Como and a lot of white folks. Uh -huh. But anyway, Ir Irwin Steinberg talked him into signing us. And sure enough, man, we blew up the minute the first thing we did on that album with that company with platinum and was getting tight. And he said, man, I got to meet these niggas. These Negroes, and you say, mm -hmm. <laughs> you tickle me with that. <laughs> you can be funny when you want to. <laughs> I, get, I get tickled sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, they threw us over there, man. And each one of us had our own private limo. We stayed at the Pulitzer Hotel, owned by the Pulitzer Prize people, right? Right. And what it was was their own home. They had a little baby mansion in uh, Amsterdam that had been turned into a hotel. And just did, and it was exclusive, you know. You had holiday inns and what all that, but this little hotel was exclusive because couldn't too many people. It was a home. It was a mansion, but it wasn't, a, you know, small for a hotel. Mm -hmm. We stayed there. They got, I mean, they, they rode out the red carpet. And we we were we were supposed to do a TV show there. I mean, they took us all around. Man, they took, went to this guy's house. He had his own mansion. It was more modern, but it had a thatch roof, a grass roof. Man, can you imagine a big mansion with a grass roof? Not really. <laughs> what well, he, he did, he like one back in time, man. We had this big round table, man, and we sat at this table. And he told us, he said, I had to fly y'all, but I wanted to meet you all personally. To just to tell y'all that I had lost a bet with Urban Steinberg. I didn't believe that a black actor could do what y'all did. And we said, yeah, man, we should. You know, we had our little egos by then, man. Each one of us had our own private limo, man. We in Amsterdam. Where the red light district is, mm -hmm. we couldn't wait to get tear up to Amsterdam. Well, we were that we were we they were scheduled, we were scheduled to do a show there, a, a TV show there, and this show was supposed to air in Germany and a couple other countries over there. And something happened. I wasn't privy to it. I don't know where I was, but something happened that Seth said, come on, man, we getting out of here. These motherfuckers, and he went to cussing and fussing, and I'm saying, what the fuck happened? Me and Pete, me, what the fuck happened? So we go to the hotel, man, and then, well, you know it, we all in the red light business and forgot about what it was. Next morning, we get up, the band gone. Me and Pete, we's on the, where they at? They're on their way, they left about 15, 20 minutes on the end of the way. Oh, man, we're going to miss our flight. 
And we had to catch a cab, man. And the cab driver went flying through the streets. We said, man, we can't miss this pipe. We can't miss this pipe. We don't have no ticket that we have to. And man, that bad motherfucker, we, I think we paid him about $100, man. He went flying through the city, man. And we got on that plane. And the next thing I know, I ordered a drink before I could get back to the United States. I was asleep. I never did find out exactly what happened. But I'm a, I'm, I'm a tied into. Because I remember Pee Wee saying about three or four months after that incident, and Pee Wee said, you know, Marshall, man, ain't never, ain't, it ain't been the same since. You know, something about what happened, because he didn't know either. Mm -hmm. Something about what happened. Um, made them mad at us. And I know, and if you look at that unsung program, when I went over to Sash's house, he was telling me, he said, man, uh, don't worry, Marshall, I got this deal cooked up where you can have more money than you ever dreamed you ever had. And he said, don't worry about it, just don't tell the fellas, and I'll pay for your house. When he said that, I thought, fuck that, man, I ain't going to. I ain't going to lie to this boy. These boys trust me with their money, man. Mm -hmm. You got to tell me what's up. And he started mumbling something about this agency. He That's what he called it, an agency. That was going to sign us to a, a lifetime term where we would never have to worry about anything. And I said, yeah, but you know, let the band decide on that. I'm, I got to tell them. And if they want to go along with you, whatever these people are you want to sign your our contract with, it, it won't be on my hands. And anyway, I, I, I had a meeting. He was there, and I let them know what had happened. And Uncle Sam, the tax people that came at me and just showed me where to pass it and messing up some money. And that's when the shit stopped falling apart. I think I got discussed all that with you. Yeah, it ain't going to hurt to go over it again. But I tell you what, man, we've been on for a little bit, about an hour and ten minutes. So I'm going to give me something to eat, man, and, and we'll get back and talk some more, man. And, uh, okay, brother. And uh, like I said, we just keep doing this recording and shit and, you know, just going back and adding and editing and, and until we finally come up with something. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm going to sit here and do and start giving me some details. I'm going to look at some of the stuff you've already given me. Yeah. Um, and I can kind of glass it over. Yeah, and if you look through that folder, man, if you start looking down.